Thank you, Liana. And hi, everyone. Um, I'm Philip. I'm the president of, or the chair, I guess, of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. And uh, today I'll be, uh, I guess, leading this meeting. Um, so the agenda, which I pasted earlier, uh, is as follows. We'll do some a quick round of introductions, so everyone will get the chance to say only a few sentences about themselves, about that, what their about their work, because we don't have a lot of time, and we have a lot of interesting topics later on. Um, so after the introductions, uh, we will give the, a brief update from uh, the board members of the user group, uh, what have we have been doing in the past uh, two months, and. Uh, then we are uh, going to just to hear from our featured speakers, which is uh, first Nicole Saad and Melissa Guadalupe Huertas uh, from the WMF education team. Uh, and then uh, user Tiago uh, Lubiana will, uh, from uh, Sao Paulo will talk about uh, his work in fighting COVID-19. So without further ado, I would like to uh, start um, Let's do it top down from this list that I see. So uh, yeah, Liana, you can start. Hi everyone, I am Liana Davis and um, apologies, my thing says Wiki Education. I'm using our shared work Zoom account here to host this meeting. Um, so <laughs> that's why it says Wiki Education. But um, uh, in addition to my work for Wiki Education Foundation in the United States and Canada, um, where we run the education program there, I am also a board member of the Wikipedia and Education User Group, which is the role I am playing in today's meeting. Uh, so. Thanks. I'm looking forward to hearing our guest speakers today. Thank you. Uh, Ishan has raised his, his or her hand, so uh, maybe they can go ne next. Ishan, you're muted, so if you want to speak, you have to unmute. Oh, we're waiting a sec. Yeah, hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so I'm currently an undergrad student. Okay, so I'm a student uh, from the um, group, and uh, I'm really interested to contribute whichever way possible. And it's really, um, I'm very happy to join you all today. That's all. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, moving on to Diego Saez. Saez. Uh, yes, uh, hello, I'm Diego. I'm a research scientist at the Wikimedia Foundation. I'm uh, usually based in Barcelona, but I'm currently in Chile. That is my home country. And um, I've been working these days in collecting some Wikipedia related pages uh, to COVID-19. I put the link in the chat. Great. Uh, then Eufemia Wandu. Eufemia or Euphemia? Okay. If not, then we can go next. Eva Seidelmeier. Um, hi, I'm Eva Seidelmeier. I'm from uh, Cologne in Germany. I, um, I'm a data scientist at uh, ZB Med, um Information Center for Life Science. And yeah, we also um, try to support um, the uh, research on COVID. Um, actually, with um, doing some or integrate some um, uh, preprints from BioArchive and MedArchive to Wikidata right now in the last days. Cool. All right. Uh, Hanno Lanz, I think. You have to unmute yourself, though. Yes. I, yes. Um, yes, I'm working in the Netherlands, um, quite active on Wikidata, and um, at the moment working on uh, pages about uh, the corona uh, epidemic, but not connected with. Uh, we, are, we, will start, we want to start together with Daniela. Um, to have the data from coming from Wikidata. Okay, great. We're moving on to uh, Jackie. 
Hey there, I'm Jacqueline Bucio. I work in Mexico City with Wikimedia, Wikimedia Mexico, and I work in distance education. So things went crazy in, in my university recently, and uh, we're just speeding up for putting online many, many courses. Happy to be here with all of you. Thank you, and good luck. <laughs> uh, Jens and Daniela. Hi, I'm joining in from the Netherlands as well, just south of Amsterdam, and together with Hanno, um, we work on a couple of Wikipedia articles, but we're mainly interested in connecting Wikidata uh, to Wikipedia when it comes to like the COVID crisis. Thank you. Joao, you're next. Hi, everyone. So I'm Joao, I'm a member of the board of Wikipedia and Education. I'm from Brazil, also a university professor, and I'm very happy that there is so many people, there are so many people in this room today. Cool. John Cummings. Oh, John, we can't hear you. That's some static there. All right, well, we'll come back to John. Josephine Halroth Larson. Or Josefina? Uh, Josephine. That's okay. good. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm a um, project leader for um, education and learning at Wikimedia Sverige in Sweden. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been employed there for about three months now, and I'm happy to join you here. Welcome to our movement. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Laura Quilter. Yes, hi. Uh, I am um, a Wikipedian. I work at a University of Massachusetts in Amherst in the United States. Um, we've been transitioning to online education and as a librarian I try to help people do more Wikimedia, Wikipedia stuff. That's been my thing. Um, so I'm here. All right. Thank you. Uh, Lena Dennis. Hi, everyone. Um, I am joining you from Massachusetts I, as well. I'm um, a map librarian at Harvard, and I have been working on Wikipedia the last few years, um, pretty ad hoc basis, and Wikidata for the past year or so, also sort of on an ad hoc basis for geospatial projects. So I'm trying to channel that right now. Of course, the pressure for those kinds of things has gone up as we're all working from home, um, which is good for me, frankly, despite the horrible um, reason that we're here. But also, um, I have been working on trying to make sure that I'm able to contribute more, even just on a volunteer basis, to the COVID-19 project specifically. Um, so that's just I'm just kind of around seeing what else I can do, sometimes on a less organized basis than I'd like, but trying. Thank you. Uh, Maxwell Beganem. Hello, everyone. Hi. Can you hear me? Hello, everyone. Yes. Yes. So my name is Maxwell Beganem, all the way from Ghana. Um, yes, I'm a member of an independent uh, user group called the Kumasi Wiki Hub, which is also under Open Foundation West Africa. And I'm an educator at the senior high school level and also a virtual tutor for educational technology at a university. And we have integrated Wikipedia 101 as part of our course. And also we are training a lot of facilitators in the area of open educational resources. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Melissa, your turn. Thank you, Philip. Hi everyone, so good to see you, so many of you. Uh, my name is Melissa Guadalupe Huertas. I'm a program officer in the education team of the Wikimedia Foundation. I'm based in Peru and yeah, just enjoying the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Nicole, you're next. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Saad. I am the Senior Program Manager for Education at the Wikimedia Foundation and coming to you right now from Cape Town, where I am also enjoying a lockdown. Nice to see you all here. Thank you. Pedro Medeiros. 
Hi everyone, uh, I was not expected to talk, but I'm Thiago's friend and I'm a biologist and a pharmacist and I'm here to see Thiago's presentation. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Um, all right, Rose or Ruth? Rose, uh, hello. <laughs> um, I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm extremely new to this. Uh, I work at a local public library and um, some of the clients uh, there uh, tipped me this because the library is ob obviously closed and I'm thinking of new ways uh, to contribute as a library. So that's why I'm here. Great. Rosie Stevenson, good night. Hi, everyone. So, yep, I'm Rosie Stevenson, good night. And I come to you from Northern California. I'm a visiting scholar at Northeastern University uh, through the Wiki Education Foundation. And um, last month, March, was my three-year anniversary doing that. And uh, this is the first time I've um, hung out with you in this kind of a meeting, and I'm here to listen and learn. Thanks. Very nice to have you here. Thanks. Uh, and Salvor Kisurardotir. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your names. Hello, I'm Salvar from the School of Education in the University of Iceland and I teach there and uh, now all the secondary schools and university in Iceland have gone online and uh, um, yes, okay. okay. Great, thank you. Nice to have people from Iceland. Uh, Shivendra Singh. Shivendra, are you here? If, oh, yes. Hello. Uh, there are some issues with the microphone. All right, we'll get back to you later. Uh, Sturm or Sturm or Hi everybody, uh, Hi. my name is Celio, uh, my nickname is Storm on Wikipedia, Wikimedia Projects, and I'm a founding member of the user group in Brazil, Wiki Movimento Brazil, and well, I'm, I'm excited to uh, hear to the Thiago's talk. I met Thiago in uh, 2017 during a synthetic biology event, and that's it. All right, thank you. Suso? Hi, I am Susanna from uh, Armenia. I am also board member of uh, Wikipedia and Education User Group. Now we are um, trying to maintain our, our activities in this uh, coronavirus uh, time. And I am all here to listen what is going on in your countries. Cool. Tiago, can we hear from you? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Tiago. I'm actually from Rio de Janeiro, but I live in Sao Paulo now. <laughs> uh, I've just finished my master's in computational biology at the University of Sao Paulo. I like finished it yesterday online in amidst all this crisis. And I'm already going to talk a lot later. so. Let's, let's start the meeting. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Uh, starting back from the beginning, uh, we have Egon, who joined a bit later. Are you here and can you introduce yourself? Egon, Egon? Egon, okay. Uh, another try for Euphemia Wandu. All right, and then we'll try John Cummings again. This, can you hear me this time? Yes. Hooray. Uh, my name is John Cummings. I'm the Wikipedian in residence at UNESCO. 
And at the moment, I'm working on helping UN agencies share information on Wikipedia about COVID-19. Thanks. Thank you. Karen Coyle, are you there? And can you tell us something about yourself? Going twice for Karen. All right, if not, uh, Meg Wacha. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Meg. I am the president of Wikimedia New York City. Um, I'm also a librarian heading open research initiatives at the City University of New York, where we have just brought, with varying levels of success, uh, courses to support half a million students um, online, many of whom don't have access to a reliable internet connection or a device um, to use to access it. Great, thank you. And Shivendra, can we try again? If you have a microphone. But if not, then I guess we are all here. Egon, I, I can see you now. Do you have a, can you speak? Yeah, I think so. Oh, Hi. yes, please. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm Egon. I'm a uh, researcher from, uh, from the Netherlands, from the University of Maastricht. Uh, I've been using Wikidata for some time now, uh, mostly working on, uh, on small molecules and um, uh, adding identifiers, uh, uh, mostly uh, adding compounds we have in our Wikipathways pathway database. And uh, uh, since about two weeks, we're working on uh, more coronavirus information in Wikidata, uh, linking that up with uh, uh, some, some, some bots that, uh, and um, uh, having uh, gene and protein identifiers for, uh, uh, for, for the, the, uh, the proteins and the, uh, uh, the genes of the viruses and linking this to, uh, to literature. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, uh, so that is everyone, I think. Uh, and I'm, as I said, Filip Malkovich. I'm uh, the, the chair of the, this user group and uh, also a board member of Wikimedia Serbia. And uh, <clears throat> now uh, I won't spend too much time dwelling on, on that. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, move on to, to our next uh, agenda item, which is updates from the user group. Um, so there have been a few things that have been going on since the last meeting, which was on January 28th. So uh, I'm going to paste a few links. Uh, the user group has uh, finalized and uh, announced their by our bylaws. Uh, so this is now on Wiki, uh, but also our annual report was completed and uh, it's also now on Meta, which you can find uh, on this link. Uh, and uh, apart from that, we, we were pretty busy organizing the Education uh, Conference 2020, which was supposed to happen or is supposed to happen uh, in uh, October, early October in Belgrade, Serbia, uh, my hometown. But uh, we're currently sort of on pause for that because of the uh, COVID-19 crisis, as you know. So uh, uh, pretty much all of... Uh, events uh, funded by Wikimedia Foundation have been paused and uh, we're currently waiting for things to resolve and to see whether it will be feasible to organize this conference this year or if we're going to uh, basically uh, move it to next year. Uh, but most of our effort has gone into organizing that um, until uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has been announced. Uh, apart from that, uh, we, we uh, we did a tech need survey, uh, which is a survey that was supposed to uh, get feedback from people about the technological needs uh, in the movement uh, regarding the education program, but not, not, not necessarily just education programs around the world. Uh, and we did get 75 responses. Uh, however, we still haven't analyzed the data uh, completely, so I'm not going to share anything more <laughs> uh, apart from the, the number of respondents. Uh, but I, I hope that in the next few weeks, we'll be able to, to send you an email about uh, what are the findings of this, and, and then uh, we'll see what, what will be the next steps on, on how to use, um, use that. 
Uh, Susanna, Liana, do you have anything to add to this small recap? Sounds good to me. Great. And Joao, of course. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, without further ado, I, I would like to move on to our featured speakers so that, says, so that we can have as much time as possible. Uh, we still have a, more than an hour left. So uh, I'm giving the microphone, quote unquote, to uh, Nicole and Melissa from the WMF education team. So please. Thanks, Philip. And it's really great to see all of you here. I'm so glad we we're able to come together to brainstorm um, on how we can, you know, support the 1.5 billion students who are currently out of school. Um, and so I'm here today to talk a little bit about uh, the action plan that the education team has put together from the Wikimedia Foundation. And I'm going to give a broad overview of the action plan. Um, that we're working on. And then I'm going to pass the mic to Melissa, who's going to um, dive a little bit deeper into some of the um, resources that we're creating and our EduWiki challenge that um, we uh, launched yesterday, did a soft launch for that yesterday. Um, and we'll, we'll share more ways that you can support some of these efforts and then share also what you are, uh, what you are doing with us. Um, so just to give you, I'm sure you, you all are aware of this, but a sense of the situation that we're, we're currently in. Around the world, there are 1.5 billion affected learners who are not in school due to COVID-19. 156 uh, countrywide school closures. About 82.5% of the world is out of school right now. And uh, I mean, I think everyone in this call is dealing with this in one way or another. Um, but what, some of the reasons that it's really important to provide educational opportunities for children who are out of school uh, is that it really helps them um, from not only falling behind academically, but to help foster a sense of stability in uncertain times um, and builds up uh, the resilience of families and communities who are impacted by crisis. So the more that we can do to support these learners, um, the better we're all gonna come out of this at the end. So the education team put together a four point action plan to pivot from our currently scheduled programs um, to doing more to support students who are out of school due to COVID-19. So the first point of our action plan is we will create and share learning resources related to Wikimedia and education. The second point is we will initiate an EduWiki challenge on social media to support learning. The third point is we will foster knowledge sharing about the impact of COVID-19 on education. And the fourth point, we will support the UNESCO COVID-19 uh, coalition. Um, I'm gonna deep dive a little bit into points three and points four, and then I'm gonna uh, pass it over to Melissa, and then I think we can probably open it up to questions and thoughts and brainstorms. Um, so the third point, we will foster knowledge sharing about the impact of COVID-19 on education. Um, the first thing with that is there's actually a Wikipedia article about the impact of COVID-19 on education that John Cummings has been working on along with like many, many, many other Wikimedians. So John, maybe a little bit later, you can talk about that. Um, but we are also trying to understand um, what Wikimedians are doing are, are around the world, what our communities are doing, because it, as uh, Susanna and a lot of you said, our programs have had to be paused. We're moving to supporting online education um, in many different ways. We're providing, as Wikimedians, we're providing webinars. We're Um, with just a few questions about how has this impacted your community and are you doing anything to, um, to provide educational opportunities to folks during this time. So I'm just going to share the link to the Google form in the chat. Um, and if you haven't already, if you can contribute to this, we are going to be um, curating all of the responses and making sure that we are sharing them in our channels and on the, um, the education page on OutreachWiki. So the form is there in the chat. 
Um, and then the fourth point about the UNESCO coalition. So UNESCO has initiated a global coalition to support the education response to COVID-19. They are using um, kind of a hashtag campaign called Learning Never Stops. I'll also drop the link to that coalition in the chat. Um, so the Wikimedia Foundation has joined this coalition. Um, Catherine, the executive director, has filmed a video in support of the coalition. And we're going to be looking into what more we can do to support this coalition. But one idea that we have is working to curate uh, educational content from the Wikimedia projects that aligns with school curricula in uh, different countries and different languages and kind of providing those content bundled to governments through Kiwix, um, who will support us to do that. That's one idea that we have. Um, we also think that we can amplify the efforts of our local communities and what they're doing in various countries um, through this coalition. And we're continuing to explore what it means to be part of this coalition and what, um, what more we can do. Um, but just the fact that Wikipedia itself is providing educational content in more than 300 languages that is, um, access is, is fairly accessible um, to those who have access to the internet um, is in itself already a help. Um, but those are uh, two of the main parts of this action plan. Um, and to explain more about points one and point two, which is create educational resources and initiate the EduWiki challenge, I'm going to pass the mic to Melissa from the education team. Thanks, Nicole. Um, yeah, so just to uh, talk a little bit more about the resources. Um, the resources that we're coming up with are mainly mini lesson plans that teachers and guardians can introduce into um, their remote learning strategies. We know that right now teachers are uh, facing through a, a big, big change. They're being overwhelmed in some, in some cases with a lot of resources, a lot of platforms. We don't want to be another source of like, oh my God, there's just another thing that I need to learn how to do and I need to like, you know, spend a lot of time into thinking about how to put this into into my plan, we want it to be uh, more, more, more dynamic and, and very, very easy to adapt. And, um, and we are not focusing only on Wikipedia, but we're, all, we're focusing on the other Wikimedia projects as well and their power to be leveraged into, into learning experiences for students of all ages. And not necessarily, again, about editing, but just uh, a, different, uh, a different approach and, and engagement. Um, and uh, we'll be launching the, these lesson plans uh, next week. We will be sharing one per week through our social media channels and we will have a category on uh, Wikimedia Commons uh, where they, they, will, they, they will be able to be downloaded, uh, adapted, translated, uh, and shared more widely. And we'll also have a dedicated outreach space uh, outreach page where teachers can, and guardians can easily find it according to um, topic, uh, age group, etc. Um, regarding the EduWiki challenge, like Nicole mentioned, we launched this uh, social media campaign yesterday, and it's again just little bits of, of different uh, proposals to uh, have uh, teachers and guardians engage their, their, their learners with the Wikimedia projects. Um, things like, you know, exploring uh, Wikilove's monuments to get inspired by the amazing photography uh, skills and, uh, and how these are shared openly with the world and, uh, and engaging in some art projects or, you know, exploring uh, the cookbook section on, on Wikibooks, uh, you know, just different angles like that. And the idea to have this as a social media campaign is uh, for this to be also shared um, with, um, with audiences that might not necessarily have access to like computers, but they do have access to cell phones. Uh, they do have access to other messaging services or social media, uh, social media platforms like um, WhatsApp or Telegram or, or those are, that are not necessarily Twitter and Facebook, but by sharing them through those, through those channels, they can be just more, you know, passed on as, as a kind of like a viral content. Um, so, so yeah, and um, what we're asking also from, from community members is that if they find that these activities that we're proposing um, are meaningful uh, for their own local communities, to localize them, to translate them, to share them as well, 
Uh, again, we will be providing uh, all of these uh, resources on Commons and on a, on a format that is easily editable. And, um, and to also bring us their own ideas. Uh, and, and we will provide the templates uh, also on Commons so that this can be increased by, by other perspectives. And, uh, and if you have any, you know, any ideas or any comments, feedback about the activities that we will be sharing through these uh, couple of campaigns, uh, please let us know. Um, I, will, I will post some links on the chat as well. Thank you. And if I can just jump in and say, um, we're also going to be sharing a communications toolkit. We're still, um, you know, finalizing all of the details of it, but essentially like every Monday, we're going to share all of the Ajuiki challenges that are going to go out for the week. So we're sending them on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, and so we'll have like all of the messaging, all of the, um, the graphics, uh, and you know everything that you need so that if you want to translate or contextualize or you know send them on the on the same days that you have all of that on uh, every Monday so if you um, just keep an eye out on the education mailing list we're going to send that out every Monday and we also have a dedicated page on outreach wiki with that will we'll have everything and we're going to update that every Monday and I, th I think that's it for us talking and uh, I think we're really interested in uh, hearing what other ideas you have. Um, I'm not sure, Philip, what, what the timing is of like when we're going to move on to the next topic, but if we have a, a couple of minutes, we'd love to hear from, from the folks here on uh, what, what they're doing in their communities and, um, you know, if they have thoughts about this action plan or some of the things that the education team is doing um, and, and whatever ideas that come to them. Yeah, so, so uh, since uh, Tiago will also present, uh, basically he will answer one of your questions. Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if it's better to just uh, let him speak and then come back to, to the general topic. What do you think? Uh, we do have quite a lot of time, so we can brainstorm. That, that's fine with me, um, if you think that's a, a better way to go about it. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that if people have like things to add to this, it, it was a very good presentation. I, I'm impressed by what you're doing. If people want to add this now, uh, maybe it's good so we don't lose focus, because mm -hmm. even though it's answering a few of the questions, maybe it will kind of divert away. So, sure. Maybe we can have uh, a couple of questions. Yes, I, I see. Sean has uh, to add a few things. So, please. So, can I speak? Right. Yes. So uh, actually, it was a um, good presentation. Uh, I would say good suggestions that a couple of people came up with. But uh, being a student uh, right now, there are a couple of things that I am facing. Um, the universities and the educational uh, institutes are uh, trying to organize online meet meets for the classroom uh, kind of an environment wherein um, the teacher presents the presentation and students uh, ask their questions or doubts. But the thing that is lacking right now is the re, uh, reality uh, that, uh, that the real problems that the students are facing uh, while working out the in their courses. So maybe we can uh, kind of share some courses. Uh, I've seen there are a couple of platforms that are providing free courses right now. Mm. Uh, was it audible? Yes. Yeah, Ish Ishan. Um, I th I think that's um a really good thing to do. Um, I think like in our capacity in the Wikimedia movement, we're trying to, you know, sh uh, share what resources we have in on the free knowledge projects with students. Um and uh, I'm not sure, like there's a lot of, of free courses online. I'm not sure about like the licensing of those, but I think that's definitely a good thing for all of us to do in our networks. Like is, is if there's, you know, stuff available to share it with those that we know who are students or teachers. So, uh, so I was thinking that uh, maybe uh, there can be a couple of uh, meetings that can be scheduled uh, according to the topic. Uh, if say, uh, 
if someone is expertise in english and there are couple of people who can pro, uh, who are interested in uh, learning english i'm just taking a vague example uh, let's say uh, any other thing uh, maybe just just hold on yeah so maybe uh, uh, being uh, a student i want to learn a, a, a spanish course maybe and uh, if wikimedia can uh, provide uh, a, a meeting wherein all the people who are keen to learn spanish or any other um, thing uh, or art or anything uh, i'm saying so maybe there can be couple of more meetings like this wherein people can give uh, live sessions i think that uh, individuals in their own communities are doing things like this already this isn't something that we have the capacity to do kind of like at the education team level um, but i think like this is something that if you want to do it that's wonderful please uh, please organize um, and if there are communities who want to organize events like that then amazing yeah organize them I think those are uh, great suggestions of things to do uh, on a kind of more community level mm -hmm. right that's all from my side thank you thank you anyone else I'm sure you, some of you have something to add. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd, we'd love to hear more um, like of what things you're doing in your local communities and, you know, with your affiliates and user groups or, you know, just like, how are you, like, I know a lot of your education activities have been paused due to um, COVID-19. So what are ways that you're finding to cope with that? Um, for example, like I know in Susanna in Armenia, you had so many student programs that um, that are probably paused right now. Are you taking them online? Are you are you providing you know virtual trainings? Um, what are the things you're doing to cope with that? Okay, uh, um, we uh, we have now um, uh, with the two universities, we, we had offline courses in our office. And now we change it uh, into online um, uh, via, um, uh, via Zoom as well. And uh, we, um, with uh, Linguistic University, we ended very good results. And um, with uh, other university, we are uh, every week we have. Uh, two hours uh, Zoom lesson. Uh, they are uh, editing Wikipedia. Our approach is another. We are trying to keep, uh, to maintain our uh, active uh, editors, not to lose them. Also, we have, uh, if you, um, uh, look through our member uh, Wikimedia Armenia uh, members. Uh, we uh, had uh, tag uh, on our Facebook uh, profiles. Uh, stay home, edit Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, it uh, helps. Also, uh, we are working with um, medical students. Uh, the uh, old. Um, uh, articles about COVID, uh, all actual articles uh, on pandemia, they are uh, uh, actualizing, updating, uh, um, and um, it's working. The, just um, they, uh, um, they um, feel their responsibility. Um, also, you know, we have a uh, wiki classroom. It helps because all uh, in Armenia, all schools are uh, closed. And uh, we, uh, 
uh, we continue wiki classroom through wikipedia uh, editing to um, learn uh, biology geography um, and uh, several uh, and maths i think in one school so um, we have uh, new uh, ideas but uh, i will um, tell uh, uh, about that, that a second time because so we need to um, have experience to succeed and, and then <laughs> to tell about this thank you yeah thanks thanks for sharing all of that it sounds really great what you're doing and i'll be interested to you know hear how it goes for you and you know what the the challenges are to learn from what you're doing it looks like um, Meg has a hand up. Do you want to um, say something? Yeah, um, so I just wanted to take my chapter leader hat off and put on my librarian hat. So I'm at the City University of New York. Um, and uh, in my role here, I was supporting about six different classes um, with Wikipedia assignments um, at the time when we moved to an entirely, uh, you know, online uh, coursework. Um, one of the things that we've really struggled with is that most of our students don't have access to internet at home and don't have devices to access it. And now with all of the libraries closed as they should be to prevent transmission, um, they don't have access to the computer labs there as well. Um, so um, we've really had to scale back our expectations for the semester, our expectations of ourselves and of the students. Um, and so some of the ways that we're doing that is um, any training that's offered is happening asynchronously. So um, we don't expect students to all come together at the same time. Um, uh, they have um, many other things happening in their lives right now that need to take priority with themselves individually and with their families. Um, uh, the other thing is that we've uh, scaled back expectations. So the assignments have changed. Uh, they are no longer writing Wikipedia articles. Maybe it's participating in the Wikipedia adventure and uh, you know, adding a few citations, trying to rethink like, okay, what can they, you know, we had certain uh, goals when they were gonna be working with a desktop or a laptop um, at the school, um, but now what can they be working with mobily? And so I think that's one of the things, especially cause I don't have a lot, you know, I do some mobile edits, but, but very few um, trying to rethink the assignments in that way quickly has been, has been challenging, right? I'm not gonna say put any ideas of success out there. We're just trying to get through um, the end of the semester. Thanks so much for sharing that perspective. I think it's really important. And that's something that we were really th trying to think through when we were coming up with the EduWiki challenge and the activities that we were suggesting for those. So maybe um, like one way we can help each other is like if you come up with those like really uh, nice little um, small activities that students can do on a mobile phone um, to share them with us so that we can include them in the EduWiki challenges and then if uh, if you feel that it's it's helpful for you to like to use those and share those with your students too. Awesome. Thanks for really thank you for sharing that, Meg. Um, is there anyone else who wants to share before we pass the mic over? Shivendra, do you want to say something? Uh, I am a medical librarian. Uh, due to uh, this uh, COVID-19 epidemic, our library is still open to provide the facility to our uh, physicians. We are arranging the online database uh, and books and also the evidence-based medicine database, like up to date, to provide the uh, latest information, evidence-based information to our faculty, physicians, and students also. Some of the students still have their at home and we, who are we are helping the, to provide the online classes. We facilitate to uh, our uh, teachers uh, to uh, give the time to prepare their uh, e-contents for the students also. We are using the Google Classroom. Hello, and many other things also. So still we are working for the our physician students. We are not uh, have the holidays, we have not uh, uh, they have not given to lockdown to us. Uh, that's good. Uh, we want to learn more about the uh, 
what the key uh, media will be do for us to provide up to date uh, information to the faculty thanks for listening all of you yeah thank you for sharing that um philip should we move on to the next speaker uh, yeah, I can also add, <laughs> while I have the mic, uh, we at Wikimedia Serbia have a, a lot of different activities related to education and uh, obviously some that require in-person meetings or, or happenings are just not going to happen. Like the, the EduWiki camp that we organize regularly in summer, during summer, uh, which is uh, a great place for young people to meet and to get introduced with the activities of Wikimedia Serbia and and education program in general and uh, yeah we just we're just not going to be able to to do that but uh, also the seminars of professional development are something that we haven't accredi been accredited for for an online version so we have to have them in person so that's been cancelled but what we can do is uh, sort of transfer the workshops online and we have done a few of those so far uh, so the the uh, the partnerships that we've already had, where we already had plans for, uh, you know, organizing a regular workshops, we decided to give it a try to do it online. Uh, and so far, uh, it seems like they went well. I haven't been involved. Uh, it was the education program manager from uh, Wikimedia Survey that has uh, organized that. But uh, from what I can see, it, they've been successful. So they might be a good model uh, not just for uh, extreme situations like this, but also for uh, countries that have uh, a very great dispersion of uh, people around, you know, along great distances. Uh, I remember uh, Wikimedia, people from Wikimedia Argentina talking about having troubles, you know, uh, wanting to do some MOOC stuff. Uh, this is in line with that, and also Brazil is obviously <laughs> uh, one of those countries. So. Uh, yeah, that is a, a, a great challenge, and I think uh, with some tech um, capabilities, we can we can uh, definitely uh, go a long way for that. Um, so yeah, that's that's Wikimedia Serbia view. <laughs> uh, so if we don't have anyone else uh, wanting to say something. Uh, we can move on to, uh, and obviously we can g come back to this afterwards. Uh, so I'd like to ask Tiago Lubiana to uh, present. Uh, he's a graduate student in comput computational biology at the University of Sao, Sao Paulo and uh, leading editor at Wiki Project uh, COVID-19 on Wikidata. So uh, that should be a small intro and Tiago, you have the mic. All right, <laughs> thank you very much, Philip. Uh, I will share some slides with you that I've prepared for this. Uh, they are also in, in Commons, so I don't have the link right now, but I'll put the link of the slides as soon as I finish here, okay? Uh, so, hello everyone, I'm Thiago. Uh, I'm from Brazil, and uh, for the past few weeks, I've been working on, the, on Wikidata, kind of working with other people in the, the week project about COVID. Uh, it's not only restricted to education, uh, but it's also associated. So I, I have to share the screen, right? I will share the screen here. Two seconds. Um, uh, all right, so can you see it? It's is it working or yes, yes. yes. Uh, all right. So first, a, a little a little intro about Wikidata. I saw that many of you are, are already familiarized with Wikidata, but just to like give an overview. So Wikidata is a project that uh, hopefully roughly wants to structure informations that are on Wikipedia. Of course, it also works with information that are not in Wikipedia, but the, the general idea is this. So we have articles in Wikipedia, for example, about the Earth. So we have the, the information, a lot of information that editors are all, of, all over the world add to the items about the Earth. And one of these informations, for example, that the highest point on Earth is the Mount Everest. 
So this is in natural language. It's, it's uh, in a way that computers cannot understand. So in Wikidata, what we try to do as a community is to put this information in a way that a computer can understand. So uh, for example, we have items that represent concepts. For example, we have an item for Earth. We have properties that describe these items. So we have a property like highest point that is used to describe the highest point on Earth. And you have values for these properties. And in this case, the highest point on Earth is the Mount Everest. Uh, we have these items for, for all kinds of uh, things. So we can represent uh, people like Paulo Freire, we can represent universities like the University of Sao Paulo, uh, we can has, re represent uh, abstract concepts like homeschooling, for example, education, uh, and so on. We can uh, basically everything that has a page in Wikipedia has an item in Wikidata associated to it. And we have even more items than the Wikipedia pages. So it's really a lot of different things. And a lot of these additions in Wikidata, they're based on uh, Wiki projects, which are a group of contributors that work together to build this information and actually construct this structured knowledge. And each Wiki project focuses on specific tasks or specific areas. And basically anyone can create a Wiki project uh, and organize a group around a, a given topic of interest. Uh, there are big projects for lighthouses that catalog the lighthouses around the world, big projects for chess, which catalogs chess players and chess movements, and there is big project biology that catalogs biology stuff, and, and so and a big project education, of course, that's related to uh, terms that are related to education. And anyone can get involved in any of these projects. There are many other projects, and uh, it's really uh, a diverse community that uh, everyone is welcome to participate. Uh, one of these projects that we, we have been organizing for the past days, past weeks, is the Wiki project COVID-19. Uh, at the time we did the slides yesterday, <laughs> there were already 44 participants in the project from all over the world. So some like experienced Wikidata uh, editors, some uh, newer Wiki, uh, Wikidata editors, so really a variety of people involved. And the Wiki project is very general. It's a, it's a Wiki project and Wikidata, and we want to structure any kind of information that it's related to the coronavirus situation. Be it the biology of the virus, be it uh, things more like uh, how people are dealing with, what are the case, num case counts, uh, what are the different impacts of the, of the whole situation. Uh, so one of the examples what I do is that to uh, people in the project monitor items for local outbreaks, uh, for example, we have this, this item in data that refers specifically to the COVID-19 outbreak in Brazil. And it's, this item is described by a series of uh, descriptors, by the, those properties that I've talked before. And one of those properties, it's called number of deaths. So this property is used to, to say how many deaths have occurred in a given event. So as of 30th of March, which this point in time, you know, another property, we had 136 deaths in Brazil, as stated in, so all the, the, the statements, all the structured information that is in quick data should be referenced by a, a reliable source. So in this case, it's stated in the, in the WHO situation report number 71. So this is a thing that many people in the project are doing right now. It's trying to keep these numbers updated. Uh, we're also trying to, to describe the biology of the viruses, the virus. So, oops, there was a problem with the image here. So items with, uh, relating to which proteins the virus has, what it does. So trying to get this information from many different sources, be they the, the scientific literature or Wikipedia and a structure in Wikidata. We are creating new properties to describe this information. So there were already three properties that were created in Wikidata to describe COVID related events. So the properties for a number of clinical tasks, trying to capture how many clinical tasks a given location has, uh, has done for the, the COVID-19. Number of recoveries, we already had properties for number of tasks, the number of cases, and now we have one for number of recoveries. Uh, and also this interesting one, the most recent one, uh, with uh, the organized response related to an event that is just a property to try to capture what the, the different uh, bodies ha have officially 
done in relation to events. So lockdown, school closures, and so on. And you have other properties under discussion, so many things. And another thing that we're doing is to make queries for this information. So uh, a very uh, nice aspect of having all this information in Wikidata data in a structure uh, format that's machine readable is that we can make queries. Uh, you don't have to care about the code here, but this is, is a Sparkle code which goes into the Wikidata service and it's able to retrieve this information in an organized fashion. So what we see here, all these, these people were people that unfortunately have died from COVID-19 during this, this worldwide outbreak. And this kind of information is available from, from Wikidata. So we, we can make these queries and have an organized way of uh, getting this knowledge back. So in, and well, you can imagine these queries can be used in many ways as a lot of information is being put on, on Wikidata. Uh, so a little bit of how this can, can find this information. So Wikipedia, as you, I'm sure all of you know, it's a very powerful source of information. Lots of people use Wikipedia uh, either as a primary source, which the, uh, and, or, or as a source that you go and see the reference from it. But the fact is that the so, solely the page for the pandemic has already a million daily views. So a million people use this page as a reference to see what's going on. And if you take into account all the other pages that are related, it, it's a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, even Google, when you search for COVID-19, it uses uh, numbers that are, that are retrieved from Wikipedia. So the information Wikipedia is really important. And organizing this information into a structured format into Wikidata enables us to have uh, more control of what's going on and having a truly powerful information source in many aspects that can be, be used by secondary uh, uh, parties or, or different uh, uh, forms of processing uh, to get the information right. For example, uh, information Wikidata is multilingual. It's not restricted to English. English. So these items are, are built in a way that we can reuse them uh, in many different Wiki projects for specific languages. So I imagine that if we can organize uh, the Wikidata information in a good enough level, we can have uh, items that are automatically made in different languages that can be continuously updated based on one single source of information. And that's very powerful. That means that uh, we don't need an editor in every single country. We need just one editor somewhere in the world to update this number and then every language automatically gets an update. And that would be super, super important and super powerful to improve information on Wikipedia. Uh, now just talk a little bit about specifically the education part. Uh, so I, I was looking at, at this and, and how we could integrate the, the goals of this COVID project and, uh, and integrate it with the education. So there's this page that's the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on education, which is really good. It's really well created. So uh, congratulations for everyone, anyone involved. And there are some structure information on that, that page. For example, we have a, a table that has countries and territories and number of learners enrolled and pre-primary and upper secondary education and in tertiary education and this information is there but it's not on wikidata it, it, it could be on wikidata uh, and then we could have this this table automatically translated to, to many languages and, and a lot of different stuff related and do some processing around so that's something that people from education could come to this project and say to us so it would be nice to have this this kind of information in a structure open public format uh, and and this this kind of uh, interrelation, the feedback, it, it's super awesome. It was super good. Uh, also, in this very page, there's in, there are informations like uh, in India on 16th March, India declared the countrywide lockdowns of schools. Uh, yesterday, when I was also looking at this, I saw that this already could be modeled in a structured format in, in Wikidata. So we have an item for the pandemic. And then you can have the property organized response leads to an event, uh, school closure, and a start time, and the reference, the same reference as in Wikipedia. So if we had this for all the information on just this page, we could already make searches and see which 
which places have started school closures earlier, which places have started school closures later, uh, how many, if you have how many uh, people are studying in each of these places, we can have uh, right away an information of how many people are out of school, and uh, all this in the public format that it's, it, it's very flexible. Uh, so, and how the, the communicate, uh, the Wikipedia education community can get involved? Well, everyone can join the Wikipedia project. It's free. It, it's, it's free in many, many aspects. It's also free of uh, restrictions. So it doesn't matter if it's your first time editing Wikidata. I'm sure that you could go there and, and, and contribute to the project. We have a talk page uh, that many people discuss many aspects from the project from like a specific data modeling to things like getting a beautiful logo for the project. So anyone can, can, can really help go there and, and suggest what the, the Wikipedia and education community uh, could uh, want from this project. What could it, it give and how can we make this uh, a good way of, of helping the, the efforts in education during this, this tough time. So, I think it's basically it. So the slides are there with the links. And uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for, for, for listening. Thank you. Thanks to the community for inviting for this talk. It, it, it's really good to, to get in contact with all these amazing people that are getting to do so much. Uh, Ishan is quickly asking the best way for developers to contribute. Uh, I would reply again that in, in the page, we have a set of open tasks. And many of the open tasks require developer skills. Many don't, but many do. So if you click on the slides and, and go to the page, you can join the project. And I'm sure that everyone that has a, a few minutes to, to, to share, to spare, uh, would be greatly appreciated. And thank you very much. Thank you, Tiago. That was really interesting. Do we have questions? Yeah, I would like to ask a question if possible. Please. Okay. Um, thank you very much, first of all, for your uh, presentation. It was really, um, really interesting. And I will definitely join the Wiki project uh, on Wikidata um, because actually one of the main reasons why I was here is that I was surprised, um, maybe for my introduction, I'm from the Dutch language Wikipedia. So a very small language uh, area and we're not many people working um, on these articles on COVID-19. And one of the things that surprised me was there is, well, as far as I could see, hardly a link between the Wikidata information and the Wikipedias. Um, I, I thought I would find like templates with um, outbreak numbers, for examples, or deaths uh, that were directly imported from uh, Wikidata, so we could use them on uh, the Dutch language Wikipedia, and we certainly don't mind keeping up the numbers on Wikidata because that's uh, particularly interesting, uh, I find. But d without me having looked at the Wiki project, do you know if there are any initi initiatives of people who are uh, maybe busy making those um, Wikidata driven oh. info boxes, for example? Okay. Uh, thanks, that, that's a very good question. Uh, before answering it, I, I just want to point at one thing. Uh, information on Wikipedia is way more updated than information on Wikidata as of right now. So think people, uh, the Wikipedia community is bigger, people are editing it more. So uh, information on Wikidata is lagging behind. So that uh -huh. might be a reason why templates based on Wikidata as of right now wouldn't be very effective. Uh, yeah. But of course, if people add the big data, then we could have the templates and it would be awesome. And, but I don't know about anyone in the project that is working with the templates right now and, and this kind of, specifically this kind of, of migration. There might be someone that's working with it, but it's not in the week project. Uh, if, it, if they were in the week project, I would probably know. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm actually trying to see what everyone is doing. But yeah. It, but if someone has this experience of making these wiki database templates and wants to, to somehow help, it would be very, very welcome. Yeah, because especially sometimes, 
uh, I, I'm not even sure if that's an expression <laughs> that's used in English as well, but, but we say like in Dutch, like it's the chicken or the egg, because there is at the yes. moment not that extra incentive to put the data on Wikidata, the articles get updated more. But True. for us, uh, speaking as a like small language Wikipedia, it's harder to update the articles than it would be to update Wikidata because that will be immediately the numbers for every language Wikipedia, especially the English one, but also other Wikipedias. So, um, yeah, uh, well, we will look into hopefully find some people who are willing and able to make those uh, templates. Yeah, great. I will put this as an open task in the in the project. Oh, that and would be really nice. yeah. Please join there and then, yeah. I hope yeah, yeah, I will. Uh, if I, if this is Egon, uh, I'm, I am from the Netherlands and um, uh, we've been discussing this and the dynamics here uh, between Wikipedias, uh, also the national ones and Wikidata, they vary from, from, from language to language and uh, uh, some, uh, some languages uh, have started using more uh, more Wikidata con uh, content than others, and uh, the Dutch one uh, is is an, is an example where uh, which which has been a bit more hesitant in in, in starting to approach these things. Uh, but there is uh, there is also in the Netherlands there are things happening. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you about the hesitant uh, part, but uh, and I think this is uh, especially an opportunity to show. Uh, because everybody's complaining about not having enough people to update the articles as good as we would like to uh, be able to do it. And this would be um, especially an opportunity for Wikidata to prove why it is important to keep all the data there now uh, for, you know, feeding Wikipedia, but also I for research later about uh, the whole outbreak and the spread of the... Uh, Epidemic, but yeah, let, let's discuss it. That that would be really nice. Yeah, it's it's a it's a moment that Wikidata has a lot to 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 help and exactly. It, and, and of course, it shows how much it's important. Like a, it's in these moments of need that some things that are are already important make very they they become very explicit. Right? Yeah, and they make things possible, like we yeah. see everywhere but, around the world. And, and for example, the tables that are in the Impacts on Education a page on, on Wikipedia, they are all only available in English. I could translate that to Portuguese, but that would be a lot of work, and everyone would have to do this for, to every language. So, I mean, it's a, one, one tiny example where this would already be very, very welcome. More so, questions. Uh, yeah, Thiago, uh, obrigado. Uh, I have one question mm -hmm. in terms of the um, sources. You, you, you were talking about the importance of having um, good reference on Wikidata. And yeah. also with this COVID thing, there, there has been large discussion in terms of how different governments count infected people and deaf people. Um, do you do any kind of coordination to get together the all the all the information from a similar source that has similar criteria or everyone puts the one that they have in their country how, how it work the there's any coordination in terms of reference in general or or anyone can put the one that they consider reliable that's that's a very good question uh as of right now anyone can put the one that they they think that's reliable i tried a bit to 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 discuss this so it's also something that there are discussions there that can help. I try to standardize this by automatically getting the information from the WHO uh, reports and use this to feed Wikidata. But this information is not the most updated one, uh, as there is a delay between the countries, country information and the, the WHO information. So that's the, the problem of standardizing to a single source. It's that sometimes you get uh, people from specific weak data in, in countries that they want to use the most updated version, which is from a local source. So there, there, there was some interesting discussions around this, and it's something that definitely needs more discussion because it's 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 it's, it's difficult, it's hard. So if you have any suggestions there or here, it, it, it's it would be super welcome. But yeah, no, no, it's uh, it's an open question. I'm I'm working in. Uh, this information project in, uh, in research team. So 
I'm wondering how these things work. I, I still don't have proposals, but it would be great to talk with you later. So I'm, I'm, uh, I put in the chat. I am asking for your email, maybe, so we can we can talk mm -hmm. later. Yeah, great. great. So you can reach me in, by by the if you post in the project, I will reply. <laughs> but you can reach okay, me in, in, the, in the user page. Yeah. Uh, so Shivendra is asking here uh, about. Uh, Parsed data and scientific articles having do uh, GI tweak data to use in Scolia. So, question about Scolia and uh, wiki data. So, this is also something that a lot of people have been working on. Uh, for you, for for some of you that may be familiar with Scolia, Daniel Michen, who is very involved in the project, uh, is also working in this COVID to try to get some scientific article information and the into Wikidata. So we can import ORCID data, we can import the IIDs, there are many ways of doing that. And uh, yeah, please join us. And I, maybe it's not as updated as we would like, but the community is actually quite involved in getting the scientific information into a Wikidata structure format. So uh, you could try on Scolia and search for a, a few things related to, it, to COVID and see some interesting information already showing up. Uh, hi, hi, this is Egon. Uh, sorry for uh, uh, talking again. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, actually involved in the Scolia project together with uh, with Finn and, uh, and Daniel. Um, what we're, we're, we're doing actually is uh, annotating uh, here uh, a lot of the um, more molecular uh, biology of, uh, uh, of, of, of the virus, uh, along with related viruses in a project with a few other people. Uh, so besides uh, literature about uh, the, the virus itself, uh, we're also working on uh, annotating uh, uh, the other uh, SARS uh, viruses, as well as the other uh, six uh, human coronaviruses. Um, even down to the level of, uh, of, of the proteins. Um, you're very kindly uh, indeed, uh, uh, just, just contact us if you, if you want to do something with this. Uh, uh, in fact, next week at the Bio Hackathon, an, an, an open international online hackathon, we're going to continue uh, working on this, uh, on this as well. Um, uh, Scolia is not perfect yet, but it has a lot of interesting uh, links uh, between literature and specific topics uh, on, on, on Wikidata. Great. Uh, so Egon has already worked a lot in the project. He's a very like good contributor. It's very good that the community is actually doing a lot. So I was impressed to see how quickly you could gather people that were interesting, interested in the project. So it's a, also a good place to get to know other people there are interest in the, this whole situation. So. Yep. Any more? Hmm. So someone has already asked in the chat, but specifically for Daniel, I hope I pronounced that correctly, about pointing to pages that need template fetching in, in Wikidata. So already some uh, conversations going on. That that's very good. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't I didn't notice. But um... yeah, I'm sorry, I'm shy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no problems. No problems. Yeah. If someone wants to ask question by the chat, also it's not a problem. Yeah. But yeah. Well, if there are no other questions, then <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Tiago for uh, giving his time for this. And uh, I think it's a really interesting uh, topic and very important at this point, uh, definitely. And uh, my personal opinion is I'm, I'm really sad that um, Wikidata isn't used uh, enough in templates. And I, I was just checking like mainstream Wikipedia templates uh, for the COVID-19 COVID impact uh, for the uh, numbers and uh, they're all local. So uh, I think a lot of effort is being wasted on 
uh, manual updating of uh, dozens of, of uh, maybe even hundreds of templates uh, instead of just doing it on in one place in Wikidata. So hopefully uh, the, the Wikipedia communities will recognize the need to to centralize this and to uh, rely on Wikidata more uh, more and, and and have it better and. Uh, I think that that will uh, sort of mitigate the, the problems that uh, Tiago has said that Wikidata is currently out, more outdated than Wikipedia. If everyone edited Wikidata instead of Wikipedia, then it wouldn't be. So, um, so yeah, that's just my observation that I, I think that we should definitely switch to that soon. And I'm, I'm uh, mm. but it's then again, it's really hard to uh, do that from scratch. So having some. Uh, some help with with uh, creating the templates in a way that uses uh, Wikidata data uh, easily, then that will be really useful. Uh, uh, one more question. Is there one country already uh, providing actual data on Wikidata that's, that's the, that uh, we can have as an, one as a source? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, I could... Is there already uh, a, a one country that have a lot of information in Wikidata, so we can use that for our uh, templates? Oh, all right. No, there's already a lot of information on, on Wikidata, uh, like th that can be used in the templates. The, the thing is, it might be outdated, as Philip just mentioned. So, I mean, in, in the, the website, you can see that we don't have any kind of uh, star item, the one starred item uh, that is very well organized. But I mean, the, 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 the pages that are most edited in Wiki Wikipedia are kind of the items that are most edited in, in Wikidata. So just go to the projects, take a look on, on, on these pages. And uh, I mean, I'm sure there are already a lot of interesting things that could be put in a template to, to Wikipedia. So oh, Lina has uh, asked if you know if Wikibridge is ha ready to do any crosswalking between Wikidata and Wikipedia. Uh, I'm 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 sorry I, I don't know what the Wikibridge project is, uh, but I would definitely look into it. It, it seems like something that I, I would really like to know. I can jump in really quick just to say um, that Wikibridge, if I'm remembering if that's the full name correctly, was talked about at WikidataCon last year, uh, which I attended. And it was, um, it's intended, I think, to help create info boxes in Wikipedia using Wikidata. So I, it, I think it'll be a game changer when it's ready because of the language issues that you're talking about. So it's just, that's what it is in my memory, but I think it's been in beta phase for a long time. So I'm not sure if it's realistic for the next few months, unfortunately, but I was curious in case anyone knew more than that. Mm, yeah, yeah, if I can add something to that, uh, as far as I know right now, you, you can have info boxes that go uh, right out of Wikidata and it shows on Wikipedia, but to edit those data, you have to go back from Wikipedia to Wikidata mm -hmm. and Wikibridge is the project where you can actually edit the Wikidata information on Wikipedia. So like in the info box or template and then it will, it, and then in that case you don't put the information on Wikipedia but, but you actually put it into Wikidata sort of without knowing. Yeah, that, that will be, I think, the, the best case scenario, right? But when you only update weak data and then it gets auto-updated. So, yeah, uh, I, I don't know if there's a page for this Wikibridge project, but this is also something that would be really appreciated in the, in the, in the Wiki project to COVID, so some information about this. Unfortunately, I wasn't in Wikidatacon last year. I wasn't already that involved with Wikidata, so, I think that the people that were there maybe have a lot of, of interesting things to add to the project too. Is that it? So, something else? Just on the page. Thanks. Thanks for the link. Any last questions before we end? 
I just like to thank you, you all. Um, I was invited as an outsider, and I'm really happy to see everyone working on this project. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to thank Joao for referring us to Tiago. <laughs> um, and I'd like to thank Tiago for presenting and also Nicole and Melissa who have uh, dropped uh, in the past 15 minutes. So, uh, and also thanks everyone for participating in this meeting. I think it was really productive and uh, interesting to hear all this, especially amid the crisis that we're in right now. So uh, thank you and uh, uh, we'll try to keep this uh, uh, practice of uh, open meetings of the user group uh, once every two months. So uh, I'll probably see you in about two months. Thank you, everyone. If you're not already a member of our user group, I encourage you to visit our page on Meta and join our user group as well. Thank you. Bye.